Welcome to Speakers 101. In this episode, I'm going to refoam a set of Paradigm Atom speakers. And uh, I'm going to show you guys my way of doing it. There's many ways to do it, but this is the way I do it, and I get excellent results every time. First up, measure your speakers. You need the outside and the inside diameter of the foam. Five inches. It looks to be three and a half inches is the dimension of foam surround I need. Incidentally, these new ones cost $2.80 each Canadian. Five inches by three and a half inches. So this should be the correct foam surround for the speaker. So let's proceed to re-foam this set of speakers. First things first, I need to get the old, this is the hardest part, getting the old foam off. So we're going to peel it off. Now there are videos out there that will show you how to do this and they'll have you cut through and remove the dust cap to put shims around the voice coil to center it. Totally unnecessary. I don't do it that way because I don't want to destroy the dust cap. There's nothing really magical to doing this. It's actually quite a, a simple process. What I'm going to do once I get the all the old bits and pieces of foam off of the old speaker, I'm going to place the new foams over to make sure that they're going to fit properly and uh, then we'll we'll hook up the speaker to an amplifier and give it a low frequency tone which will get the voice coil moving up and down and this will aid in centering the foams so they can be glued down with special glue So I'm going to just shut the camera off while I clean up this, at least from this part, and then we'll work on the, the inner cone. The glue that we're going to use to glue it down is MG Chemicals 8337 Speaker Service Cement. This is specifically designed for repairing speakers. Usually this will come off quite easy, at least from the metal part of the speaker, the frame. When you see speaker shops charging a small fortune to recone or refoam your speakers, bear that in mind that it's it's really not rocket science to do this. I've done several in the past. This is the first one I've done on camera, but I did I did refoam my Altec Lansing 305s, both the the woofers and tweeters or wood woofers and mid range. I did that years and years and years ago, and they're still good. You know, I, I probably did it 15 or more years ago, and they're still doing fine today. Once we have all the glue removed, we're going to attach the new foam, and we've got it connected to an amplifier that is connected to a 50 hertz generator, and this is what we're going to use to keep the voice coil centered. We're going to give it a 50 hertz signal. Once we get the, of course, once we get the foam surround glued to the speaker itself, this will allow the, the foam surround to center around the outside so that I can so I can glue it to the outside. So first things first, we're gonna put a bit of glue around the inside edge. We're gonna coat the inside edge here of the, of the cone, and we're gonna set the foam surround. Now, there are other ways of doing it. There are other people that will show you that you cut the dust cap off and you put shims in. That's one way of doing it. I'm not gonna do it using shrimp, shims myself because I don't wanna cut the dust cap. I don't have a replacement for it. So I don't wanna cut the dust cap, but we can center the speaker by giving it an AC signal. And once we've got the, the center portion of the cone glued down, we'll use that to center the exterior portion while the glue is put in place. So first things first, I've got my, my glue and I've got the little brush that came with it. We're going to open up the glue and we're going to put some glue around the inside of the uh, speaker itself. So this is the glue here. It's a, it's a special glue that remains pliable so we're going to put this around the edge of the speaker. And 
and this stuff should be used under good ventilation as it does have acetone in it and it has all kinds of uh, warnings on the package about inhaling the vapors including using gloves and all the other stuff that the nanny state wants us to uh, to use notice that i'm not wearing gloves i mean i guess if i was doing this every day all day repairing speakers for people i probably would but uh, the little bit that i'm going to get on my hands is not going to kill me heck <laughs> especially considering the exposure to chemicals I've had for the past, you know, 40 odd years who are working in the service business. We were always Next, getting chemicals on our hands and surround in place. Nobody really cared. You kind of center it and push it down onto the speaker to attach. This cement is almost like a rubber spent. It's very tacky. So the foam will stick immediately, but you can pull it off before it dries. We're going to let this stuff set up for a bit. Once it's set up, then I can work with the audio generator. We'll get the speaker going so that it will center the cone, and then we'll apply some glue around the outside edges to secure it down to the outside edge, and then let it dry. And that is uh, basically what is involved. I'll do all the speakers. I've got foam surrounds for a bunch of speakers so we'll be doing videos on doing the other ones as well but this is the first one out of this this batch once we get these ones set up I'll let you guys hear how they sound once I'm all done the cement doesn't have to set up that long either before continuing on to the next step. I only left it sit for a few minutes. Okay, the speaker's been setting up. The glue has been setting up on the speaker for a few minutes. We're going to get the speaker going now, and now I can put some glue in around the edges here. I'm going to glue the edges down. coming loose. Once you get the glue all the way around the edges, we'll, we'll push it all the way down and let it seal. Keep the uh, amplifier running to keep the speaker cone centered as we seal it all the way around the edges.
it's important to keep the oscillator running and I actually have this going quite loud so that the, the speaker is actually moving up and down about a quarter of an inch that's to keep the speaker centered and once the glue starts to set up then it's you can shut it off Got a lot of warnings on this contains acetone phenyl silica anthramus and O whatever that is Okay, I think I'm probably centered now, and I can now reduce the volume and let the glue completely dry. And uh, we'll give it a few minutes to dry, and then we'll mount it back in the cabinet and see how this one sounds as I reassemble the speaker. And then I'll continue on with the second one. i got to go get the other speaker because it's hanging outside my backyard. And we'll do the same on it. Okay, this has been drying now for a few minutes. Let's just see how it operates without the cabinet. That's got a pretty good throw, that's for sure. I think we're ready to reattach this in the, the box and see how it sounds. Okay, I got my speaker to go back in to the cabinet. Goes in just like that. Get the four screws to hold the speaker in place. I think this was the positive, and that one was the negative. Okay, I'll hook up the speaker and I will put a tone through it and I will put some music through it too just to see how it sounds and then we'll do the other one okay so 50 Hertz tone still plugged into this amplifier we'll change our input to Bluetooth and play some music bad. Now to go and get its twin and uh, we'll do the foam on that one. So here's the second one. This is what's hanging outside. Well you guys saw how it was done on the other one so on this one I'm gonna let this one play through pretty much in real time so you can see how long it actually took to do the job start to finish because the other one I started when I already had the speaker apart so here's the real time repair.
Oh, by the way, for those whining and complaining that these weren't attached, they actually are stapled. Right, they are stapled down with the foam. I just, or the insulation, I just didn't do that when I put it back together. I see a spider in there decided to make the speaker his home. Well, not for long. Yeah, this one, the foam's actually falling right out for me. Yeah, this speaker actually didn't sound bad, but it may have gotten worse. I haven't used it for a few weeks. Had this one out on my patio. We listened to it when we're sitting out, enjoying the nice weather, but I haven't been out there for a bit. Got another phone here. Incidentally, if you guys want to know what these things cost, $2.80 each. So if you're ordering foam speak foams in for your speakers and you're paying more, and that's Canadian by the way. If you're ordering in foams and you're paying more than that, then you're getting ripped off. And that's retail at a store. No shipping charges when you walk in and buy it direct. These ones were $2.80. The other ones were I think were five bucks a piece, but they're they're still pretty pretty cheap. sound very good. And remember, these are a small speaker.
ID. Yes, it is turned up very loud, and I, you can hear me talk. Well, you can hear me talking because the music is. I got it cranked because I'm listening for any noises and stuff, and I got it really cranked up loud right now. I'm sure my neighbors just love this. a little 50 watt per channel class D app and I'm, I'm, I'm probably only running around 20 watts right now. I mean, it's really quite, uh, these are quite efficient speakers, but uh, yeah, this little amplifier, it really, it's a class D, but it, uh, it kicks out a fair bit of power. I'm quite amazed with it for what it is and, and how it sounds. Time to glue this one down.
wicking around the edge to make sure it's glued down all the way around, which looks like it is. And we keep the uh, speaker going here for a few minutes just to make sure that everything stays centered. Okay, we'll let that dry for a bit and then get it back in the box. Second one ready to go back together. Pop the driver in. And then we'll hook this up and listen to them in stereo. And that will complete this set and this video. Okay, I'm going to play a track here. This one's called Beyond Words. If it sounds like Enya, well, that's just a coincidence. This is the Music Bakery, Jack Walden Maker. And I'm probably going to pull a, a copyright hit on this because this track has been used by other people for like subliminal message recordings that they've tried to publish. And well, I've always got it released anyway. So let's just take a listen to a little bit of Beyond Words by Jack Walden Maker at the Music Bakery.
to give you an idea how loud that is. I'm talking now. You cannot hear me. You can't hear a bloody word I'm saying. I'm talking to the camera. But this is so loud that the mic isn't picking my voice up whatsoever. I should have had my my uh, sound pressure meter in there because I bet you I was up about 110 dB right now. How much I was able to put on because obviously if I overloaded the microphone I would have cut it off but I, I had it really cranked up here because I was listing for any buzzes or any crackles or anything that would indicate that speakers weren't done correctly but of course they're done correctly um, and you know as I say you'll see other guys that will do this and they'll cut the dust caps off and they will put shims down around the voice coil which is completely unnecessary if you use an audio oscillator and if you don't have an audio oscillator you can download apps on your phone that will generate a 50 hertz I usually use 50 hertz that seems to be a pretty good one 50 or 60 hertz 50 hertz maybe 40 hertz the, the, the key is you want to be able to get the speaker moving but not moving too fast so that it will center and then you can glue it down and it'll it'll center the speaker this is some of the old stuff here uh, Jack Weldemere music productions this is this is stuff that he had before he formed his company the music bakery and he used to publish music under his own name Jack Weldemere music productions to give you an idea how old this music is you can see the dates under 1995 this was like August 1995 was when this was released I've had this music in my in my library since the uh, early 2000s I think was when we bought it I've, I've told you guys this before but it was with my my old business partner who passed away in 2006 uh, when we were doing commercial stuff he kind of went crazy and bought a whole bunch of CDs and uh, anyway uh, this is where this is where I ended up with all the music because it was I was a partner in the in the corporation that we've now since long dissolved I still operate it but I just I operate using the same name but uh, um, I, I do I just do archiving work now in my YouTube videos and the odd the odd private production but we used to do a lot of corporate stuff a lot of corporate stuff we were busy constantly it was almost like a full-time job hey it was almost like being a YouTube content creator I'd, I'd go to work at my day job fixing electronics and then after work and on weekends I was doing production work literally 40 hours a week doing production work Anyway, these uh, speakers are now fixed. They're sounding great. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one, which will likely be another speaker repair because I've got two more to do. Catch you later.